Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I'm Lindsay Thrift. Uh, I'm from Gitcoin, a VP of product. I'm joined by two of our product managers, Nate and Michelle. Um, and I'm excited to, to uh, get to follow Divya as we talk about how do you actually build the rails um, for doing some of this funding? How do we fund the public goods, the positive externalities we seek to create? Um, so if you're not familiar, Gitcoin um, has been running a grants program since 2019. Um, we have a what we refer to as our C grants, our centralized grants platform um, that you can uh, participate in today. We just wrapped up grants round 14 uh, last night. Um, one of our biggest round yet, um, very successful, and we're excited to talk about where we go in the future. Today, um, if you participate in Gitcoin grants, either by contributing to public goods you care about, um, by building public goods and seeking funding, or by being um, a matching pool sponsor, um, you're going to join Gitcoin in the way that we are funding public goods. What we're seeking in the future um, is to move towards a world where um, each community can define the way in which they fund their public goods, what's most important to them. Um, and so this is our decentralization path. We, we launched a DAO last year um, and a governance token GTC at that time. Um, but the path to decentralizing our technology, while expensive, is intended to make sure that we are um, really uh, meeting the needs of our target um, markets, um, and that being grantees, um, communities that are funding public goods, um, and those of you that are in those communities and wanna, want to determine how those funds are distributed. Um, the thing that we know today is that grantees um, really have a hard time finding the funding that they need that's non-extractive. Um, many grant programs have launched, um, but the way that you go about it today is going and finding each of these grant programs, applying, going through those different, um, e each different path slightly different to get there. Um, if you're a community that's got funding to distribute, there's um, significant barriers to entry. Um, many are just using simplistic forms of Notion or you know, these basic tools to do direct grant funding um, and can't take advantage of these really unique mechanisms um, because of the cost um, of building up the technology and integrating them in a way that you can make them useful. Um, so we're on a mission um, to build an open source, modular, and decentralized grants protocol um, that would allow any community to determine how they rapidly test those different public goods funding mechanisms um, in a way that meets their needs. Um, alongside that, we want to build a, deep a deeply liquid registry of projects um, that can participate in that. So our, our desire is that grantees or project owners have an opportunity to create um, their project in a registry where they build up reputation and they can take that one um, project and apply to many different grants rounds. Um, so any round or any program running on the Gitcoin grants protocol, um, a project owner would be able to interact with. We also wanna build a protocol that allows these communities to quickly spin up um, a program that meets your needs um, and allows you to do it in a way that it is fit to your intentions. Um, I loved the comment um, at the end of the last talk about um, you, you set up what's important to you before you utilize a mechanism. Um, our goal is essentially to, to build the rails for there to be a flourishing ecosystem of these open source mechanisms that you can plug in aligned to your values in your community. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Michelle and Nate to talk in detail about um, the different components of this protocol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Um, yeah. I'm Michelle, um, one of the product managers on um, Gitcoin's Grants 2.0 protocol. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more today. Ooh, the mic. I um, wanted to talk a little bit more today about Grant Hub, which is um, one of the core components of the Grants 2.0 protocol. Um, it's sort of our all-in-one destination for you to create, build, and fund your project. Um, so a couple things to call out here. Um, I think, like we mentioned in the slide before. Um, all these projects that are created on Grant Hub, which you see above, um, are stored in a decentralized universal project registry. And the goal here is to also have um, your project activity brought across multiple um, grants rounds. So um, this could be Gitcoin, could, this could be other partner rounds. Um, the goal is to have you be able to build your project profile all in one place and then be able to apply to these rounds without, without having to like, scour the internet for the best grants uh, programs to apply for your project. Um, so speaking a little bit to the long-term roadmap, which I'll get into a little bit more in the next slide as well, um, with Grant Hub, we're sort of um, creating this genesis for um, an evolution towards a decentralized proof of project code platform. So what does that mean? Um, so a couple of things to call out here. Um, we want to start doing a little bit more work in um, building project reputation. Um, so how do you sort of build credibility for your project over time? 
Um, we also want to create space for impact certification, so that's like collecting impact certificates, um, being able to show um, the impact that you have generated with the, the funding that you received from um, the Grants 2.0 protocol. Um, and then over time, you're sort of building more and more credibility for your project, so that also ties into civil defense. Um, next slide. Um, so speaking a little bit more from the user perspective, so um, you today, like if you were to go on Grant Hub, what could you do? Um, there are three main things you can do right now, but we'll sort of add more functionality over time. Um, first, you can create your project. So you would create a project on chain, um, and I like to think of it as like a common application, a base for all the grants rounds that you can eventually apply to. Um, the key here is that you should be able to fill out all of your project information um, more, more or less at one, one time, and then you can kind of carry that over to the many different applications um, that you might be um, submitting. Um, so that ties into the second functionality you can do on Grant Hub, um, which is to be able to apply to a round. So you should also be able to take the project that you created and submit an application on chain to a round, such as Gitcoin's round or other partner rounds um, that you're interested in participating in. Um, and then last but not least, if you're accepted into a round, um, we also want to foster that journey of being able to track your grant. So how much funding you received, um, how many contributors have you had thus far, matching, et cetera. Um, and this is all sort of building towards this North Star vision of um, you're able to apply to multiple rounds for funding all in one place. You can share your, uh, the impact that you've generated with that funding and over time build uh, more and more credibility for your project. Um, so it becomes this like really wonderful positive feedback loop um, for you to sustain and um, turn your dreams into reality. So with that, I'll pass it over to Nate. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Nate. Uh, and if Grant Hub is really the one-stop shop for a project owner, uh, the next piece that I'm gonna speak about, Round Manager, is really that one-stop shop for an organization that's running a grant program. Uh, so this can be a ecosystem, it could be like someone who has a protocol and is trying to incentivize uh, projects to build upon that ecosystem. This could be a community, for example, the city of Oakland just ran around in GR14 um, to fund programs in their community. Uh, it can really be any sort of community that's trying to fund shared needs, and we really look at Round Manager as that core piece of software for them. Um, designing this really for interoperability and modularity, just to make sure that, like, as Lindsay mentioned, there is this sort of, every different organization wants to run a grant program in a different way, and we want to make sure that Round Manager is really providing the backbone uh, to enable them to do that. Next slide. And if you think about a grant program at a very high level, there's kind of three core actions. Uh, there's the act of selecting the projects, like what's eligible, who do we want to have be part of this grant program. There's the process of allocating those funds. How do we want to decide um, where these funds should be going among these different projects? And then there's the fund management itself. How are we pulling funds into this program? How are we ultimately like paying out and making sure that uh, projects are receiving those funds? And as we start to talk to uh, grant programs and people who aspire to run grant programs, I think what we're learning is that there's no shortage of, of ways that people want to be able to plug and play um, different mechanisms into these kind of core decision points. So if you look at selecting projects, um, things like impact certificates or the reputation that Michelle was talking about with Grant Hub, community nominations, board reviews, there's no, like I said, shortage of ways that people want to be able to figure out like what pro projects make sense for them. Similarly, if you look at allocating funds, uh, Gitcoin is really focused on the quadratic funding method. Even within quadratic funding, I think there's a number of different ways that you can think about weighting those votes. So uh, I think the DSOC paper had some really interesting ideas around how you can start thinking about individual reputation or how you can start thinking about um, kind of group reputation, like how, how closely aligned are, are different groups of, of voters. There's also quadratic voting. Uh, there's a number of different ways people are thinking about this. And then lastly, in fund management, um, at Gitcoin, we've been ex experimenting with things like aqueducts to actually pull funds in, um, as well as the different workflows for how do you pay out your, your grantees. But the way that we're designing the overall protocol is that each one of these high-level decisions sort of has a, a box, uh, as you can think about it in the protocol, that you can plug in these mechanisms. So as you're thinking about what makes the most sense for my community, what makes the most sense for my program, you can really pick and choose uh, what you want to do here. And the way we're architecting it, you'll be able to draw on this like really rich pool of decentralized data. Um, so we're at Gitcoin, we're working on something called Passport, which allows you to pull together um, a bunch of different unique identifiers. Um, you can, again, look at things like impact certificates or soulbound tokens. Like 
really want to make sure that you can pull on this sort of whole world of ID primitives um, to figure out which mechanism makes sense. Um, and the way that we're putting this all together, there's, I guess, three more like core technical components. Uh, the first is the program contract, which is really the anchor for a constellation of contracts uh, that will be basically the record of your program on chain. So this allows you to encode, like these are the mechanisms that we're using, uh, call out to whatever contracts those mechanisms are using, um, also be able to point to all the data that is powering your, your underlying contract, but really just have this kind of home base that anyone can come and see what's happened with your program. Um, that is also working with what we're calling the program registry. So this is a, a public database of all of the programs, all of the associated uh, grant projects that are part of that, as well as kind of their results and status, uh, built on top of IPFS in the graph. And then lastly, we're building a DAP um, that you can use to access all that information. So just a really easy convenience layer for, for working with those tools. Um, and then the kind of like last piece that we're thinking about here like, is what we're calling Grant Explorer. And this is a, a UI that a contributor to a program can come to see what grants are in that program. They can vote on how the funds should be allocated if that's the way the, the program's been set up. Um, they can experiment with different curation mechanisms, like how do we want to figure out what's shown first, second, third, et cetera. Um, but I think what is really exciting about this is because we're using these um, decentralized tools and these public databases, uh, we're going to offer a, a UI as part of this, but anyone can really build something on top of this and figure out what makes the most sense for running their grant program. Yeah, turn back to Lindsay. Awesome, thanks for the deep dives. Um, so that kind of gives you a sense of where we're headed. Um, I do want to give a caveat that this is all pretty early stage. We're building the MVPs um, of these protocols. Um, we, we've got the core functionality in place. These names are likely to change. <laughs> um, so keep, keep watching. Grants 2.0 is sort of our placeholder. It's what came after the centralized grants program. Um, I do want to give you some clues to like how we're going to, how we see this being adopted, where might your community um, or your project fit into the grants future. Um, so the first one, um, this adoption path is, is maybe the most obvious, um, and that would be where Gitcoin will continue to run grants rounds ourselves. Our grant program isn't going away. Um, so we'll, we'll be dog fooding this just like everything else we build at Gitcoin. Um, we'll be adopting the Grant Hub um, as our, our universal registry for each round that we run ourselves, um, using the round manager protocol for any of our rounds. Um, and then a selection of, of mechanisms we'll be using. Um, pairwise QF um, is the version of quadratic funding we've been using. My slide is outdated, but Depop is actually Passport. Um, what we're using for civil resistance, we use for the first time in GR14. Um, and other um, analytics, and even um, we've started adding some conviction voting was used to do some experimental curation of our Grant Explorer, um, even here during GR14. Um, the second path is we'll continue to support ecosystems who are looking for assistance in operating their rounds. So today, you can come and say, hey, Gitcoin, we'd love for you um, to run a round during your main grants round. You get support from our um, most excellent grants ops. Um, they've got the specialty in best practice. Um, how might you manage um, setting up eligibility requirements? We'll continue to do that, and we'll do it with you on the grants to um, protocol suite. Um, the third and one that I think is most exciting in a lot of ways is um, now we're beginning to expand and allowing anyone else um, to use this suite of protocols to run your round on the dates that make sense for you, run multiple at once. Um, use a different set of mechanisms if you choose. Um, maybe you want to use quadratic voting and you don't have a contribution model. You'd be able to do that with the new protocol. So um, we're really creating this sovereignty that your community can now run your round whenever you want. Um, this is a path to adoption that um, we're beginning to roll out in just a month or so. And the last opportunity is you don't have to adopt the full suite either. Um, maybe you'd like to um, plug in with our, our registry, um, but you've already got Rails for running your grant program that you're happy with. Um, we think that the Grant Hub and the, the Project Registry um, have a lot of value, even if you're not using our Round Manager protocol, and that you'll be able, as, as projects build up that reputation, they collect impact certificates, um, and, and you begin to see participation in other rounds, you know that these are legitimate projects that you want to give funding to, you'd be able to pull that from our registry and use your own um, program however you've constructed it. A little bit of timeline. Um, we, we replaced our trust bonus mechanism with Passport and GR14, which just wrapped. Um, we're looking to move to the decentralized um, grant hub next. So purple is the, at the top is the Gitcoin path to adoption. 
down below in the green um, is where we begin to release this to the community. So you can see coming up end of July, early August, um, we have our first um, partner slotted uh, to adopt. We're not quite ready to announce publicly, but we do have a partner um, that will run around on grants to you uh, here later this summer. Um, and we're beginning to look for other partners who'd like to participate in that with us. So. We'll have a couple minutes left for questions. I've got a QR code up here. If you are running um, a grants round um, in your community, if you're beginning to design one, we'd love to talk to you. Um, like I said, we ha don't have final names yet. Um, we also are excited to really be doing user research. Um, so sign up. Um, if you are a project owner, uh, if you're building some public goods and you'd like to participate in our user research for Grant Hub, there's an opportunity to let us know that there. So go and take some questions. Anyway, uh, whoa, all right. <laughs> uh, so and as you guys were planning, I, one of the things I love about Gitcoin is that you guys have been experimenting with grants for a long time, right? You just closed out GR14. You've done this a bunch, uh, and you probably deployed more capital to more organizations than probably any other group in this room or anybody else at this conference. And I'm curious, as you're, um, as you're going through these grant programs and you're preparing for Grants 2.0, um, are there any things that you can share from us that you learned from talking to grant, uh, grantees, like people that you're granting money to, in terms of, and the things I'm curious about are, in what ways are grants not the right mechanism, or in what ways are like uh, grants only take you so far and then you need something else? And maybe that's not what you're building with Grants 2.0, but you obviously have a lot of people that you've talked to that you've gotten feedback from, and I'm curious if we could learn from that as well. Yeah, I think the big learning um, to share is related to why the, the mission and vision we just shared for the Grant Hub, um, and that is we've learned that many grantees are going like program after, like kind of like the old VC campaign, you like went from VC to VC, there, right now you're going grant program to grant program, and you're repeatedly filling out the same information, trying to f like, like decipher whether or not I qualify for this round. Um, I think as we build up this registry and we have this public data available, there's more and more of an opportunity for us to better serve that community and understand, and, and I think even give feedback to those with, mon with capital to deploy about like, this is the kind of impact via impact certificates in the registry where you could be deploying. And I'm just, just creating um, a bit more, uh, I don't know, continuity, I suppose, in that, um, in that experience and what we have today where it's it's very disjointed it's very taxing and, and time consuming and often isn't sufficient funding so folks find themselves bootstrapping more than they might otherwise um, or growing slower and so hopefully we can begin to expedite the growth um, for those folks any other questions is this on uh, I was just wondering, uh, you talked about the project registry, and um, part of the incentive, as I understand it, is to see projects learn and grow and change over time. You want them to be adaptive uh, based on the feedback they get. Um, so sort of like, I wonder if you're thinking about what constitutes the sort of DNA of a project, and as a project changes over time, there's both, we want to incentivize learning, but we all, there also will be an incentive to reuse a project sort of identity and just what the trade-offs are there that you're seeing. I think that's uh, one of our points of learning and discovery, actually. Like, we're, right now, the, the metadata for projects in the registry is just what you would expect at like a baseline for an application. Um, we're, as, as we're doing some exploration with protocol labs around impact certificates and others, um, and I think even as we begin to see projects into the registry and different rounds begin to run on the protocol, it'll help us better understand which data should that be. How do these projects evolve? Um, I think understanding, uh, right now there's just grant programs, like blank. Optimism is experimenting with retroactive public goods funding. That's like one new version. But I think as we begin to see all these, like kind of an, at like one plane of vision, we can start to see that spectrum and like what data should we be putting into that registry and how should we be showing it off for others. I think that's it, Tom. One more question, I see. Okay. Um, hi. Uh, yeah, thank you for, for, all, the, for all the info. Uh, I'm a scientist by training, so I have a little bit of experience uh, applying for grants through the NSF and NIH. Uh, one time successful, many times unsuccessful, very difficult process. Uh, and so I'm really excited about what you guys are building and whether we can make it accessible to other people to access capital to have impact in, in other ways, right? Um, so I'd be really interested to kind of 
hear about perhaps um, maybe non-traditional use cases outside of Web3 that you guys have explored. I've collect, I have a shopping cart list of grants for just like weird science projects as well. So I'd just love to know on your side what you guys are thinking. Yep. Yeah, we're definitely focusing this initial like six months or so of development at the Web3 community, but not excluding them. There's some folks that um, have been participating in Gitcoin grants that we're chatting with at, actually specifically for medical research and medical science um, who are also trying to innovate on that process. Um, I think Nate mentioned the Oakland round that's running right now and did just run in GR14, which is a community-based round. Um, so that application um, is coming. I think that's where some of these mechanisms become really unique. How do you wait the expertise of those making decisions around research like you said you were declined for funding like was that was that really meeting the needs of the community or not it's unknown but I think the feedback we're hearing is like in many of these traditional settings the decision making and where the impact happens isn't always connect well connected and some of these mechanisms around voting and weighting people's voting um, into those could help um, improve that distribution of capital um, there are some challenges in moving out of the Web3 space, given that we have chosen a Web3 stack to do this um, around wallet interaction, having on-ramps and off-ramps, and should we start, you know, integrating with, say, Stripe and taking credit card payments or, like, you know, those sorts of things. So there's um, kind of a whole, like, large design space around there, but it's very much on our minds for where does Grants2 go beyond Web3 after we, we, we've kind of launched in the Web3 space in a solid footing. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work you're doing and yeah.